Well, here we are another season, Dell Outdoors Turkey Hunting Series. I appreciate you joining me. I tell you, if you've been here any amount of years, you know what these videos are about. If this is maybe your first time ever viewing, our videos are a little different in the fact that it's not so much about me killing the turkey on video and taking you on a hunt. Uh, even though we'll be doing that when turkey season opens here in a, in a couple of months. But uh, it's really about passing the knowledge. That's what our channel is all about, passing the knowledge taking the education to you and teaching you methods and tactics on how to kill these old wise long beers that we all love to chase. So you make sure to subscribe and make sure to tune in every week now because we're going to be pumping out the videos for the next three months teaching you and showing you tactics and I encourage you to go back in the channel and watch a lot of the older videos. You'll learn a lot of things. So you stay tuned to another season of Dell Outdoors Passing the Knowledge Turkey Hunting Series. Let's get started. So we're going to talk about something that's a big debate and a hot topic around turkey hunters. If you get around bonfires or you get around pit fires or you get around hunting cabin, uh, get around a group of turkey hunters at a restaurant, this subject will probably come up and you're going to have a lot of different uh, opinions on it. But over the many, many years I've turkey hunted, you know, over 30 years I've been chasing these turkeys and I've killed a lot of turkeys and hunted all around the country. Uh, I think that I can give you my opinion and I think it's a pretty good opinion and that is calling versus is woodsmanship. You know, that's a big debate on it. You'll, 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 you'll have one side say, oh, call it. That's, you know, if you're a good caller, that's all it takes. And then you'll have another one say, oh, you, you gotta have woodsmanship. If, as long as you got woodsmanship, you don't need no call. You know, so, it, you know, it, it, it can become a squabble. It can become actually a fight almost. But uh, in my opinion, and here's my opinion on calling versus woodsmanship, and that is, I think it really takes the best of both worlds to become a perfect turkey hunter. And I don't know if there's any such thing as a perfect turkey hunter probably not but I think when it, if you can mesh the two together that's the best of both worlds but if I had to pick a side if I had to just pick a side and man that would be hard uh, because I think both are a 50 50 you know important it really is but I think if I had to pick a side in this argument maybe and just squeak by just a little bit maybe just I mean five percent maybe if we just squeak it by I think I would have to choose woodsmanship over calling and here's why okay the reason is is because I know people who can call good I know that you can be an expert caller you can I mean you can sweet talk them and you can do every single thing on a turkey call possibly uh, that you can and that's important don't get me wrong that is super important especially when it comes to turkeys that you got to finesse and you got to get in and we've all had them turkeys so great calling is very important no doubt great calling is super important I mean I can't express to you how important that it is so we all need to practice and we all need to get better and we all need to be you know learning different sounds that we can do on different calls because you never know what it's going to take to get that gobbler uh, unhung this coming spring but going back to woodsmanship you know you can be a great caller but if you don't know how to work the timber and you don't know how to work the terrain and you don't know how to set up on that gobbler it's not really going to do you much good if he just don't want to come in and you're going to find turkeys whether they're hinned up or they're just you know, hung up for whatever reason uh, maybe an obstacle's got them hung up or they just you know, they're just one of them old turkeys that they're not coming uh, they're not they're not budging that hen's going to come to them if you don't know how to work the timber and you don't know how to read turkeys and and move around without being seen and set up correctly then you know what you can be the best caller in the world a lot of times it ain't going to help you or you could be a mediocre caller and i'm not saying that you should be mediocre by any means i think you should get better as i said but you can be a mediocre caller or even a great caller and if you can set up right and you can get in their bubble and you can know how to read them and get ahead of them sometimes and get to where they want to be and call sometimes they'll just come right, running right into you so I do think woodsmanship maybe squeaks it ahead just a little you get bit a turkey that's really hung up and 
you can't move. I mean, you just can't move. You, you know, maybe it's just too open. Maybe the leaves are, you know, maybe it's still bare out there in early season, or, or, or maybe it's just a lot of open fields. You just can't. You just can't do anything because he's going to see you. You've got to. You, that's where your calling has to just really step it up. You've really got to step up your calling when it comes to that because you're going to find that many times these turkeys are going to need that little extra finessing to, to, to get in there. So that's why I tell you every year, get better. You know, don't just go out there with this attitude like some people, well, as long as I can work the woods, as long as I can do this, that's all. It's, no, because there's going to be a lot of times, it doesn't matter, there's no woods to work, and you've got to depend on your turkey calling to get that gobbler in. But there's going to be more times, in my opinion, there's going to be more times when correct setup and you've got to move, especially when you're hunting in the mountains and the timber, and especially when you're hunting in woodlots, you've got to be able to move, you've got to be able to set up correctly, you've got to be able to, to get in that turkey's bubble. And you know with the rise of blinds and shooting houses, you know, when, when, when most of this generation is hunting like that in open fields and decoys, I think we've kind of lost that woodsmanship. Now that's just my opinion. I think we've lost a little bit of that edge of that woodsmanship. And we're sending a bunch of people out there turkey hunting that if, if they don't have a blind and I'm not against blinds you know we use tidewee blinds uh, on special occasions when it's raining or when we don't have a place to set up uh, you know, whatever the case, and we got to set a blind up. You know, hey, I'm all for blinds, but if you just want to get stuck in that routine of setting in a blind with decoys out there, and that's your turkey hunting every day of the spring, man, you're going to really be in a, for a shock when you got to get out there one on one with these old gobblers because you're not really going to know what to do. And if you don't set up right, it's really going to hurt you down the road. So you need to learn how to work the terrain, you need to learn how to move along. Uh, edges. You need to learn how to crawl. You need to learn how to get on your belly and even, you know, belly crawl up to 15, 20 yards, maybe 40 yards, whatever the case, that you got to get into that turkey's bubble without being seen. And I think we've lost that. I really think we've lost that ability to have good woodsmanship, but I'm going to tell you something. A good woodsman and you put a good call uh, that he can call real good in his mouth, he is a deadly weapon. And that really separates a lot of the men from the boys, as the old saying goes. When you have someone who can work the woods and read gobblers, know where he's at, kind of where he's going, you know, and even if he don't know where he's going, he can slip around and get on the right set. And that takes woodsmanship. It doesn't matter how great of a caller you are. It doesn't matter how good you can run a mouth call. It doesn't matter how good you can run a tube call. It doesn't matter how good that you can uh, sound You've got to get out there and learn how to walk in the woods. And man, I think sometimes I've hunted with people where I think, man, they just don't know how to walk in the woods quietly. You know, even in, even in, in leaves that are real crunchy, you know, they just drag their feet, they'll step on stuff because they're not used to being out there one-on-one, -on -one, no decoys, you know, back up against the trees, knee to your face, shotgun across your lap. They, it's almost like a lost art form uh, where we're just out out here one-on-one -on -one with the turkeys. Now, many of you know that's followed me for any amount of years know I'm not a big decoy person. Now, I've got one I set out sometimes, so I'm not against it, just like I'm not against blinds. However, let me tell you something. Very rarely does my decoy even come out because I enjoy hunting just me, the turkey, back up against the tree, knees to my face, and let him come looking for me. Let me be able to slip around. Let me be able to figure him out and let me be able to call him in and him come looking for me. And that's the way I like to hunt. And in my opinion, I think that's the best way to hunt. Sometimes you can't do it. Sometimes because of the terrain or whatever the case, you've got to get in a blind or it's raining or something or whatever the case. But in my opinion, it's still the best way to kill a turkey. So woodsmanship versus calling. Which one is it? I think it takes the best of both worlds. 50-50 is the best. However, if I had to choose one, I say get out there and learn how to work the woods and learn setups. If you don't know how to set up right, it ain't going to do you no good if you got the best shotgun, the best uh, loads, the you know, best apex loads, the best Mossy Oak camouflage, the best Stoker shotguns, uh, you know, the best chokes. And you can look like you stepped off the page of a Bass Pro cat uh, shop Shops catalog. It's not going to do you no good if you don't know how to get out there and set up correctly. So learn setup. Us. And that's what we do here at Dell Outdoors. So I would encourage you to go back and watch some of the older videos because I talk about this stuff a lot. You know, over the years I've 
really broke down a lot of these things and talked about how to set up correctly on different scenarios that you're going to face in the spring turkey hunting woods. We all do them. I don't know everything, but I've hunted them a long time. And what I have found uh, in talking to thousands of turkey hunters every year, when I'm meeting them at shows or meeting them at seminars or just meeting them out even hunting, you know, I may run into you someday just out on public land or maybe, you know, in a restaurant somewhere. Uh, and what I've heard is please don't stop doing this type of videos because these are gold. These have helped me kill so many turkeys. These have helped me tag my first gobbler. These have helped me become more uh, of a proficient turkey hunter and kill more. Please don't stop doing these type videos. So this is the type of videos that you're going to have primarily here is me just t passing the knowledge to you. And we're going to be taking you on turkey hunts when season opens too, but this is turkey hunting kind of school right now. We're learning so when we get out there, we're not going to be kind of, you know, shocked by, you know, something that happens and don't know what to do. Learn now how to do this and learn some tactics and have them in the back of your mind so that you can go out there and be successful. Because that's what I want. I want you to be successful. I want you to experience putting your hands on a big long spur turkey this coming turkey season. If you haven't killed a gobbler yet, you've been struggling for a few years, hey, this could be the year that you everything falls in place and you can reach down Grab a hold of him, you know, and pack him across your shoulder, and it's no better feeling in the world. And that's what I'm here for. So make sure to subscribe to this channel so you can learn more uh, of woodsmanship and calling and all uh, a, a lot of other tactics that we're going to be talking about also. And uh, I really appreciate it, and we'll be seeing you in the next video. So you stay tuned. And as I've already mentioned, make sure to subscribe to this channel. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. We got a lot more great turkey hunting action coming. We got educational videos and turkey hunts once season opens up. So you don't want to miss any of it. We'll be uh, pushing out about two videos a week. And a lot of them will be this format, educational style, because that's what people really respond to. And that's what you really enjoy is the breaking down of these strategies. So make sure to subscribe to this channel. Also check out all of the links below of our sponsors, whether it's Stoger Shotguns, Kona Scopes, Tidewee uh, products, a lot of great products over there. Just use that promo code DALE to get even a better discount of all the great products, blinds, rangefinders, boots, all the products we're using that you'll see in the videos. So make sure to check them out as well. Also check out uh, Game Cuffs and all the great sponsors that's helping us out this year right in the links below. And we really appreciate all of you and we hope to see you in the next video in just a couple of days. God bless you. Until next time.